Hello my friends, so we're going to look at Unit 3 Lesson 4 which is on bearings. So let me explain the concept behind bearings really quickly. If you're not sure of this, we can I can clarify for anybody in class. It is a tricky concept, so let's just see how we get on with it. So a bearing <clears throat> basically means the direction in which you're traveling. It's a way of giving direction. So if I tell you that well, we all know, for example, that a compass always points north, right? So if we're at this point here, the dotted line for represents north. So if I say that something is uh, traveling on a bearing of, say, 50 degrees, that would mean from the north line we have to rotate 50 degrees clockwise. Okay, so you go from the north line 50 degrees clockwise, and that would mean that the whatever it is, ship or that, is traveling in this direction. Okay, 50 degrees from the north line. Obviously then, you know, if I was to say it is traveling at 120 degrees from the north line, it would be, that would be 90, or this is a little bit more. So it would be traveling along that line. You see? So that's the concept behind bearings and how bearings work. So, a type of question that you could be asked as well would be something like this. If you're told that this is point A and this is point B, and you could potentially be asked, what is the bearings from point A to point B? So from point A means you're at point A, here's our north line, to point B. So if you wanted to travel from A to B, now, you, wanted, you would travel along that green line. And the question is, the bearings from A to B is what's this angle in here? From the north line to the line you would travel along. Yeah? So that's the concept behind it. Hopefully it'll make more sense as we work through some of these problems. So, just the page has got all crazy on me, don't worry about that. So let's have a look. Again, we're going to talk through some of the problems. I'm not necessarily going to answer them for you outright, but hopefully I'll give you enough information to be able to solve them yourself. Okay, excuse me. So runner A runs north for 6 km. Runner B starts from the same position and runs 8 km west. So we'll say... Runner A is here, goes north for 6 kilometers and stops up here. Now, runner B starts from the same position and runs 8 kilometers west. There you go. So, it's asking you, find the bearing from runner B, sorry, to runner B from runner A. So, runner B finishes here. So, from runner A means we're starting at runner A who ended up up here, by the way. Ignore what I just put in. So, you, if you wanted to go from A to B, you would have to travel along that line there, that green line. Okay, so what you're looking for, the bearing from A to B, there's our north line, would be the angle. If we start at the north line and go around clockwise until we hit that line, that would be our bearing. So, that yellow, that yellow angle, well, what does it consist of? If you look at this little angle inside the triangle, if you work that out, and also, if you work out this black piece, which is 180, and add it to that, so look, it's this angle, this red mark inside the triangle, plus the black piece, which is 180, will give you the bearings from A to B. So attempt that and we'll go through it in class. We'll correct it if people have difficulty with it. Right. Question two. So sometimes with bearings, there just can be a bit of difficulty interpreting what the question is actually asking. Okay, So you have to be clever of that or aware of that. So a hiker walks with a bearing of 82 degrees and stops when she's 6 kilometers north of her starting point. Okay, so let's just see what that means. So... She starts here, walks with a bearing of 82 degrees. So I have to put in my north line as always. A bearing of 82. 82 degrees would be down there somewhere like that. And so let me see. 82 degrees in here. So we want to find out how far she's, sorry, she's six kilometers north of where she started. So that means, and this is tricky, that from here up 
to kind of be in line with where she finished is six kilometers. Okay, so she actually finishes walking over here, but she's six kilometers north, means she's six kilometers kind of above this horizontal line here. Okay? So basically, you have this triangle now, and you're trying to find this here, which is the distance that she walked. Okay? And the 82 degree angle is this one in here. So you use your trigonometric ratios like we've done before, and that will help you to find out the length, okay? Again, it's quite tricky, but just stick with it. Okay, a ship sails with bearing of 290 degrees, right? So let's put in, here's where my ship starts. Going to dot in my north line. 290 degrees, okay, so that would be about 90. That would be 180. 270, 290 would be up there a little bit. So it goes like that for 80 kilometers. And the question is, how far west of the starting point is the ship? Well, west, here's my north-south line. West is going to be this distance here. Okay, until you come across as you're directly below where you started. Okay. So you've 80 kilometers, the bearings was 290, you're going to have to work that out there. So what's this little angle inside the triangle, which is what's going to help you out? That's what you have to work out, and the answer in there is actually 20 degrees. Because if you follow me here, right, to get to here is 180, to get to here is 270, so that little bit inside is 20 degrees. And what we want to find is how far west... So that tells me that my x goes here, and that's what I want to find out. Okay, So like I said, it's the interpretation of the problem. It's the interpretation of it that can make it difficult. You have to be able to interpret it well. Okay, lastly, let's finish with a beauty. So, let me see. A plane flies with a bearing of 36 degrees for 75 kilometers, then changes its course to 126 degrees for 110 kilometers, arriving at point C. Okay. So our plane is going to start from here, put in the dotted line. It's going to travel 36 degrees. Okay, so bearings are 36, so something like that. For... 75 kilometers. Ignore my neighbors banging their doors. Okay, now, and it gets to point, uh, it changes its course. Okay, so we'd say it, it, change, it gets to the point B here, and then it changes course, right? So put my north line in. So from point B now, it changes its course to 126 degrees. All right? So that means that we have to go 90 plus another 36, which is 126. And it will go that way for 110 kilometers. And we want to know then what's the distance it finishes here. We would want to know what's the distance to the start point. So we're traveling that, and this is point C where it finished. So we want to find that yellow line. Well, what you need to notice here, you see this angle? It's a 90 degree angle. Because it went from a bearing of 36 degrees to a bearing of 126, which creates a 90 degree angle in here. So it gives us a 90 degree triangle. So Pythagoras' theorem will actually help us to find out the distance, that length of that yellow line. But now comes the hard part. So in part B, you have to find the bearing to point C from point A. Right? It's important that you read that correctly, because if you do it the wrong way around, it could be much harder. So, if you want to travel from A to C, you want to travel along that yellow line. Okay, so we want to find the bearing from A to C. So from A means we're at A. If I want to travel along, that I have to travel at this angle here, marked in green. Okay, now you can see clearly that that green angle consists of this angle that I just put in in black, plus the angle that I've put in in red. Now, the angle that I've put in in black is the original bearing, isn't it? Which is 36 degrees. Then you can find out the angle marked in red 
by using your uh, inverse trigonometric functions and you add the red to the black and it gives you the bearing. Okay? Tricky, but I don't think it's beyond what we're capable of. So, have a go at that and good luck.